Hey everybody, I'm Jeremy with Wyden Woodworks. Welcome to my very first build video. Today I'm going to be walking you through how I built this doggy day bed. My dogs love looking out the window, watching the day go by, barking at squirrels, but the height of the windows in our living room are too tall for their little corgi legs to see over. So I decided to put together this doggy day bed that rests on a platform and has a removable ramp. That way they have a place to hang out that's high enough for them to actually see out the window. I used just over one full sheet of three quarter inch maple plywood, but it can be done with a single sheet. I also used two 48 inch dowels. The bed is 22 inches deep and 47 inches long, and the platform is 23 inches high with the rails landing at 29 and a half inches. The ramp is 10 by 48 on a 30 degree slope. I don't have a truck to transport full sheets of plywood, so I have to get it cut in half at Home Depot. Then once I get it home, the first thing I do for big plywood projects is break the sheets into more manageable sizes. For this project, I scribed a line at 48 inches, knowing that it would be oversized so that I could cut it down later. Then I clamped the sheet down and used my circular saw to get a rough cut for the platform. Then I could set that piece aside. With that out of the way, I could raise my table saw blade so it was just over the height of the plywood and I could bring the rest of the full sheet over to my saw and rip it into four inch strips. Four inches is wider than the legs or stretchers need to be, but by going larger now, I'll have enough material to mill the pieces after glue up. And there's plenty of material left on the sheet to get all the pieces that you'll need. When ripping large stock like this, I use the wing from my miter saw to support the weight of the plywood, kind of like an infeed table. Doing this allows me to better control the large sheet. After I rip the plywood into strips, I take the pieces over to the miter saw and cross cut them to their rough length. I cut the leg pieces to 31 inches and I needed 16 pieces to glue up for the legs. The short stretcher pieces were cut to 19 inches and I needed two of them for each set. The long stretcher is cut to 42 inches and I just needed two of them. I cut all the top rail pieces to 23 inches and for the secondary posts I cut seven inch pieces and needed three for each one. With all the pieces cut, I could glue together the strips to make the legs, lower stretchers, and the secondary posts. I divided all the pieces into groups and made sure that I found the two best looking ones to be the faces for the legs and stretchers. For laminating pieces like this, I find it's easier to apply a lot of glue to just one side instead of putting glue on both sides. It makes it easier to stack the pieces and keep them aligned before you apply clamping pressure. For F-style clamps, I always make sure to use scrap pieces so that I don't mar or scratch my project piece. After getting each assembly into clamps, I use a wet rag to clean up as much of the glue squeeze out as possible. I let the assemblies dry overnight and then I took them out of the clamps. Having my bar clamp storage right over my workbench has been incredibly handy for doing glue ups. After pulling the pieces out of the clamps, I used a large putty knife and a chisel to clean up any leftover glue. I wanted one side of each glue up to be as clean as possible so I could use my table saw and miter saw to clean and mill them. With the legs all cleaned up, I could bring them over to the miter saw to take off just a hair so I could use that clean edge to butt up against my stop block and cut the legs to their final length. I don't have a traditional miter saw fence. So instead, I measure how long I want my pieces to be and make a mark on the wing at the front and back of the blade. I know that the front edge of the wing is parallel and square to the fence, so I scribe a line and clamp a straight board on the line. Then I butt the clean edge of the legs up to the stop block and cut them. 
When I have to saw through thick material like this, instead of just going straight down like a chop saw, I slide the blade back and forth. This helps clear out sawdust and prevents burning on the piece. To clean up the legs, I first set my table saw fence to take off about a 30 second of an inch. Then I ran the mostly clean sides against the fence and took a pass. I set this individually for all the pieces. This creates one perfectly smooth side. So I could then flip the piece 180 degrees and run it through the saw for its final width. For the legs, I set the saw to 3 inches, creating a 3 inch square leg, and ran each one through. I milled down the stretchers and secondary posts in mostly the same way, running them through the table saw first and then through the miter saw. When I make cuts like this on the miter saw, I line the piece up just outside the line and then sneak up to it so that I get the right length. To make sure the short stretchers were the same length, I first cleaned up one edge, then lined them up and cut them together. Doing it this way will help make sure that the final piece stays square. Now that the legs and secondary posts are in their final dimensions, I can cut the tendons that will become the upper rail posts. To do this, I switch my table saw blade out for a 5 8 inch dado stack. The arbor on my saw allows for thicker stacks, but I found that anything much above 5 8 starts to get a little sloppy. Of course, you could do this same technique with just a single blade as well. I used the secondary posts and a scrap piece of plywood to mark out how long I would need to make the tenons. Then I set my fence up with a stop lock for the right distance on the legs. Using a stop lock and a miter gauge like this reduces the risk of your piece binding up between the blade and the fence. I raised the dado stack to 3 8 of an inch to create a shelf for the bed platform to sit on once it all gets assembled. Then I took my time running all four legs on all four sides through the saw. Using the dado stack to cut the tenons left some grooves on the plywood. I started trying to clean this up with a chisel and hand sanding, but I switched out to a power sander to make the process faster. I used my sheet sander instead of my random orbit sander so that I could make sure that the edges of the shells stayed square with the tenons. I didn't want to use any metal fasteners on this project, so I took the dowels and cut them down to two inch pieces. I used my dowel cutting jig to make this easier. It's a square piece of MDF glued to a scrap of plywood that I made a perfectly square groove on for my hacksaw blade to run through. Then I could clamp a stop block on it and get equal size square dowels. I made four dowels for each joint. To drill the corresponding dowel holes in the stretchers, I used my Rockler dowel jig. By clamping the jig to the end of the stretcher, I could use my drill to make perfectly sized 90 degree holes for the dowels. A collar on the drill bit sets the depth for the drill so you don't drill too deep. Now that the stretchers had dowel holes in them, I could drill out the mating holes on the legs. I couldn't use the dowel jig for this because it wasn't deep enough to reach the center of the legs. So I laid the legs on my workbench and used a scrap piece of plywood as a spacer to lift the stretcher to the right height. I measured up 8 inches from the bottom of each leg and used a square to mark a line. Then I could insert the dowel points into the stretchers. They sit inside the dowel holes and have a point on the outside so that you can mark a second piece exactly where the hole should be. I used a square to line up the stretchers, then used a mallet to pound the pieces together, leaving a divot where I could center up a brad point bit to drill the hole. I took the faceplate off my dowel jig and used it to make sure my drill was at 90 degrees to the legs. Then I used masking tape to make sure I wasn't drilling too deep. I dry fit the pieces together to make sure that they would sit flush and square to each other. 
Now that all the individual pieces were milled and assembled, I could work on the platform. I moved the piece I had set aside up to my workbench and dry fit the legs on top of it. This allowed me to get a real life measurement for how big to cut the platform. I placed the leg assembly in line with the two square factory edges of the plywood, and I made sure to measure multiple times to make sure it was square. Then I could mark where the legs would land and measure what size to cut the platform to. I waited until the leg assembly was done to cut down the platform so that I was referencing the actual lengths for the legs. I ripped the platform down to its final width of 22 inches at the table saw. Using a feather board helps keep the piece pressed up against the fence. My miter saw doesn't have enough cutting capacity to cross cut it to length and cutting it on the table saw would leave a large portion of it unsupported. So I put a piece of two inch insulation on my bench and taped a straight edge on the platform so I could use my circular saw to cut it down. Now that the platform was at its final size, I could mark out where to cut the mortises. I lined up the legs with the corners and marked their size. Then I measured 3 eighths of an inch all the way around. I chucked a 2 inch Forstner bit into my drill and used that to hog out a majority of the mortises. You could just drill a normal size hole and then use a jigsaw to cut away the material. But I trust my drilling skills more than my jigsaw skills and wanted to limit how much sawing I would have to do. I then went in with my jigsaw to remove the rest of the material, being extra careful to sneak up to the lines so I don't cut away more than necessary. Now that the platform is ready to go, I dry fit it on top of the leg assembly so I can measure and mark where the secondary posts will go. The front post goes right in the center so that it supports the top rails, and the side post goes 10 inches from the front corner so that there is an opening where the ramp meets the bed. After marking where the posts go, I use my doweling jig to drill holes to align the posts. The process for this is exactly the same as before. Going into the project, I knew that using plywood and cutting the tenons with the dado stack would remove the face veneers. My plan for this was to take pieces of plywood and use my bandsaw to remove the veneers so that I could re-glue them to the tenons later. I set my bandsaw fence so that I was removing just the veneers and then ran the boards through the saw. With all the individual pieces done for the bed platform, I could use a quarter inch roundover bit in my palm router to give everything a slightly rounded edge. I went over all the legs, stretchers, posts, and the platform, making sure to round over the tops and bottoms as well as all the sides. Before gluing everything together, I used my random orbit sander with 120 grit sandpaper to smooth things out. Sanding now is easier than trying to do it after the glue up. And I started at 120 grit because this is higher grade plywood and didn't need any shaping. I'll resand everything with higher grits later before I finish them. Now I can start gluing all the pieces together. I start with the legs and the short stretchers by putting glue in the dowel holes of the leg, then inserting the dowels. It's super important to mark all your pieces so that you're putting the right ones together. I started gluing in dowels before realizing this was the wrong leg, so I left the dowels in that leg and grabbed the right one. I put glue in the holes of the stretcher and on both of the faces, then pressed the pieces together. The dowels help keep everything aligned. I use a wet rag to clean up any glue squeeze out before adding clamps and moving on to the next joint. Then I glued the other short leg assembly together and set the two aside to dry for a few hours before removing them from the clamps and gluing in the long stretcher. I didn't have any clamps long enough on their own to clamp this together, so I linked two F-style clamps together and clamped the legs this way. I added extra clamps to make sure it stayed square. While the leg assembly was drying, 
I decided now was a good time to glue in the posts. I added glue and friction fit them to the platform. These pieces are extra important to make sure that they're square so that the top rails go in square as well. So I took some extra time before clamping to check and then recheck that they were. I added clamps in from both directions so that there was equal force to make sure that they dried square. Then I used a wet rag to clean up the squeeze out. Once those dried, I could add the platform to the legs. I set the platform on the tenons so there was just a few inches between the shelves and the platform. Then I used a glue brush to apply a liberal amount of glue and used bar clamps to pull it all together. While the bed was drying, I moved it out to the driveway so I had room to glue on the new veneers. I used a glue brush to apply plenty of glue to the veneers, then clamp them to the tenons. I made sure to use as many clamps as needed to close any gaps between the veneers and the tenons, then cleaned up the squeeze out with a rag. After everything was dry, I used a flush trim bit in my router to take off a majority of the excess veneer material. Then I used a chisel and a mallet to clean up the edges. Because they aren't structural or weight bearing, I wasn't worrying about using dowels on the top rails and decided to just glue them in. I wanted the rails to be right in the middle of the posts, so I used my combination square and set it to the width of one layer of plywood. Then I used that to inset the rails from the outside of the posts. I glued up the first three rails, then let them dry for a few hours before removing the clamps, then glued in the last rail and set the bed aside for now. To prep the ramp, I broke down another half sheet of plywood on my table saw and miter saw. I ripped 11 inches off the sheet, then measured and marked so I could cross cut it down to 48 inches before bringing it back to the table saw and ripping it to its final width of 10 inches. To cut the angles on the ends of the ramp, I used a digital angle finder to move my table saw blade to 60 degrees. Then I removed the insert plate and used my cross cut sled to cut the angles on the ramp piece. I glued and milled the ramp supports the same way I did the legs and stretchers, but on the top ends of the supports, I cut a 60 degree angle to match the ramp. Then I clamped the pieces together, cleaned up the glue squeeze out, and set it aside to dry. To make the ramp attachment support, I glued up a block of plywood and off camera cut a 3 quarter inch dado in it, then cut a 45 degree bevel on the front to allow clearance for the ramp. Once the ramp support was dry, I took it out of the clamps and gave both the ramp and the support a quarter inch round over to match the bed platform. To glue in the ramp attachment support, I aligned it to the front edges of the leg and the platform, then used plenty of clamps, making sure not to apply too much pressure to cause the support to become misaligned. I wanted to not use any fasteners on this project, but I couldn't quite figure out the right angles to be able to glue the supports to the ramp. So I used a countersink drill bit to pre-drill through the ramp into the supports. Then I applied glue to the supports and drove in two and a half inch screws, making sure that they were completely flush and recessed into the ramp. I'm going to be covering the ramp in carpet tile, so I'm not too worried about seeing the exposed screws. With everything finally glued up, I could put the finishing touches on the bed. I started by sanding the ramp and the bed with 220 grit sandpaper. Then I removed any leftover dust with a tack cloth before adding the first coat of finish. To finish the project, I used ferrothane water-based polyurethane in satin finish and just applied it with a brush. Once the finish dried, I came back and sanded everything with 400 grit sandpaper. 
I applied two more coats of poly, sanding in between, then did a quick run with 400 grit sandpaper to knock off any tack left over after the final coat. And with that, the build portion of this project is done. I'm really happy with how it all came together, and I think the dogs will get a lot of use out of it. We ordered a custom cushion to place on the top, as well as some thick carpet tile to act as tread on the ramp. So I'm just waiting on those couple pieces to come in and then I can finish up this project. Uh, and I'll post a, an update video once it's done. I hope you guys got something out of this project. Uh, if you did, feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, I'm gonna be putting a video out every couple of weeks. This is the first build video that I'm doing. So feel free to drop a comment below and you know, tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, uh, what you think should be changed, what I could do better. Um, I'm open to comments and uh, I'll see you guys next time.